Elliot Murphy says he had a different take on Lou Reed. I'm John Bowden from Rock History Music. In his 2017 book, Lou Reed, A Life, Anthony DeCurtis calls the singer witty, vicious, contradictory, and brilliant. You mentioned the name Lou Reed to some music fans and even some people who knew him and their shoulders will go up a little bit. But he really was plugged into something wonderful while being sort of tortured at the same time. I asked Elliot Murphy about his relationship with Lou Reed. Well, Lou had a very, to say he had a mercurial personality is, is not an understatement. But I never really saw that side of him. Uh, he kind of took me under his wing. I guess he. I was doing a lot of show, when Aqua Show came out. I was playing a lot at a club called Max's Kansas City, and, uh, and that was where the Velvet Underground did their last string of dates. In fact, and Lou started coming to the shows, and I had known, I had spoken to Lou, and briefly met him before because I did liner notes for a Velvet Underground album, Lives 1969. So he kind of took me under his wing, and uh, you know his career was doing very well at that point, and after walk on the wild side and after david bowie kind of took him under his wing yeah and uh, he said you got to get off polydor i'm going to get you to rca they love me and he brought me there and he introduced me to his management team uh dennis katz and uh yeah i can't i, I i'm just grateful to lou for what he did because he gave my work uh he definitely upped the credence level there because people if lou said something was good you know, people at least in New York believe him. When talking to Elliot Murphy, a lot of people come up. A lot of his old friends like Billy Joel and Bruce Springsteen. As we just mentioned, Lou Reed, he worked with Phil Collins and a host of other people. At one point, we started talking about Elvis and I shared with him something that I shared on this channel before. In the summer of 1977, when Elvis died, my mother told me in the kitchen and being an ignorant 17 year old, I said, who cares? At that point, I didn't know any better. And even though I knew the history of Elvis, kind of as a 17 year old, I knew he was important. Looking back, it was a very uncool thing to say. Here's Elliot's reaction to that. But I can understand that because one of the great regrets of my career is I didn't go see Elvis play. I didn't jump on a plane and go out to Columbus, Ohio or someplace like that and see Elvis play because in 77, Elvis was not cool. Yeah. You know, he, he gained all that weight. His show just seemed like he was sleepwalking through it, you know. I don't think we rock and roll, the sense of history and seriousness that came about later, which almost led to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, you know, that didn't exist in 77. So I can understand your reaction completely. I think that was probably the reaction of a lot of us. How did Phil Collins end up being on, uh, on one of your albums? That was really because of the producer, Robin Jeffrey Cable. He, had, uh, he came out of Trident Studios, and Phil had a side project at the time. Was it Brand X? Brand X. Brand X. And we were talking about drummers, and he, th he suggested Phil Collins, and I said, God, he seems so much different from what I do. But he said, no, I think he can really bring something. And uh, he was perhaps the funniest musician I've ever worked with. Really? He was so great in the studio. He was just cracking up all the time. It was hard to... It was hard to uh, play with it. The one thing you'll appreciate as a drummer, my producer had to gradually take away almost all his cymbals. Because <laughs> he was just hitting them all the time. I was like, okay, you don't need that ride. You don't need this crash, you know. Gradually took away all his cymbals. But uh, he was a very sweet guy, really. And I remember speaking to him during those sessions and uh, Peter Gabriel had left uh, Genesis. And I said, what are you going to do now? And he said, God, we've been doing auditions for singers. He says, we must have done hundreds. And he says, I'm so sick of it. I'm even thinking of singing myself. What a moment in time, huh? And as they say, the rest is history. Tinnitus. Something I'm Ooh. hearing all the time. I mean, we just yeah. heard it with Clapton. Uh, from yeah. your perspective, when did you know something was going on? Oh, it was about... 25 years ago you know I how tinnitus ringing in the ear some but you can pronounce it tinnitus or tinnitus both are yeah. correct uh, your ears will ring after a show but then it'll go away and then the ring then it'll go away but once it started ringing and it did not go away and it just 
it was driving me crazy. And when I went to the doc, I just thought the doctor was going to say, take two of these, you know, yeah. and it'll go away. And the doctor said, well, it doesn't really go away. You just learn how to live with it. And, uh, you know, I have learned how to live with it. And uh, it comes and goes. It's, I mean, you, you Google tinnitus and there's, everyone's talking about it and people do different things about it, find different ways of living with it. I thought I was going to have to give up music. Uh but I had a good doctor in the beginning. He said, no, you're not, you don't have to give up music. That would be a disaster. He says, because then all you're going to hear is the tinnitus. And uh, so, I mean, I protect my ears now. I wear earplugs when I play. I did move more from uh, to acoustic guitar, from electric guitar. Uh, but, you know, from 20 years of every time I take a solo, I'd be standing right in front of my twin reverb amp with the drummer's snare drum right next to my ear. It, it took its toll. And this brings me back to what I said before, you know, music, being a professional music, musician is a very physical occupation. You know, football players and hockey players, I guess they have problems with their knees and their arms or elbows. And musicians, it's a physical problem. You know, it's, 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 minute because it's these tiny microscopic hairs in your ear inner ear that keep getting knocked down each time the noise is too loud and one day they stay down so what happens is that your brain makes this noise to compensate for what it's not hearing and for this maladjustment but uh i hardly know any musician my age who doesn't have tonight um, but the, this guy told me he's quite a popular guy he says he says listen if you think the guys who you're writing about that actually say it are the only people who have, who have, who have it, he said, no, no, some people just don't want to tell people that. I mean, it's a medical thing. Yeah, I don't think you, a lot of people want to talk about it because uh, I think certainly the, uh, it might not be the best thing to say in the music business. Hey, this guy's ears are going. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I've learned to live with it and uh, I hope that it, becomes more and more public you know though i do know some who was i talking to clem burke drummer from blondie he hits those drums pretty hard and he doesn't have it so it it, it doesn't necessarily mean if you play loud you're going to have it but in my case i got it for more information on elliot murphy just go to his website elliotmurphy.com there's a documentary called the second act of elliot murphy we'll have links in the description of this video where you can either stream it or buy it it's available actually on his website. Thanks for all the folks who bought our, our swag, our t-shirts and our cups. We appreciate that. We're expanding this channel. And speaking of that, we're looking for volunteers still. If you're a self-starter and have some good ideas about research, writing, video ideas, you want to be a guest host on, on this channel, get a hold of me through our Facebook page. Just There's links in the description of this video. Just go through Messenger and contact us through that. Make sure you comment on our videos. We read all the comments. Subscribe to our channel. We need that a lot and share our videos. That would help. I'm John Bowden from Rock History Music.